Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India Welcome to lecture 19 of the course on multivariate data mining methods and applications. The title of this lecture is ICA algorithms and exploratory factor analysis. In the last lecture, we have discussed the problem of blind source separation. You have observations on mixtures of signals or mixtures of latent variables and then on the basis of mixtures of observations, you have to find the latent variables. So, you have to unmix these observed mixtures of observations. Then one of the problem is to find the unmixing weights W's. So, in this lecture, we are going to discuss different algorithms for extracting the weights, for extracting a single weight or for extracting multiple weights, we will consider different algorithms. We will also discuss exploratory factor analysis, which is required in noisy ICA. So, for obtaining the unmixing weights, W's, we use fast ICA algorithm. Now, fast ICA package actually uses two different ways of extract, extracting components. So, single component extraction and multiple component extraction. In single component extraction, we find a single weight W and then we extract a single component. And in multiple component extraction, we jointly find a set of weights W's and then uh, using those unmixing weights we extract multiple components. So, first we consider the single component extraction. Now, suppose x is n cross r pre whitened data matrix. It has been already whitened means it has been centered so that its mean is 0. And then we also transform it in such a way that its variances are 1, means variances of different components of x are 1. The algorithm finds the direction for the weight vector w belonging to Rn that maximizes a measure of non Gaussianity of the projection W transpose x. And then how we do it? For this purpose, fast ICA uses a non quadratic non linear function. Suppose G u is that function and uh, it is first and second partial de derivatives exist. And then its uh, first derivative is small g u and second partial derivative is small g 1 u respectively. Then uh, we use these uh, derivatives to measure the non Gaussianity. Now, first we consider deflation based fast ICA algorithm for extracting single component. 
So, the first step is we center and whiten the data to give x and for that purpose say suppose sigma hat x x is an estimator of variance coherence matrix then sigma hat x x is 1 upon n summation i equal to 1 to n x i minus x bar x i minus x bar transpose and then we write sigma hat at x as u hat lambda hat u hat transpose. And then we take x i minus x bar to make the mean of x size to be 0 or we take the observations as deviation from their respective means and then we multiply it by lambda hat to the power minus half u hat transpose. So, then we get the centered and whitened data. Then we choose an initial vector w and w has norm 1 say w transpose w equal to norm of w equal to 1. Then we choose capital G to be any non quadratic density and this capital G has its first and second partial derivatives. So, the first two partial derivatives of capital G exist and these partial derivatives are G and G 1. Here are some of the choices say uh, you can use uh, log cos hyperbolic function or exponential density. Now, you have to update the weights w. For that purpose, we take 1 upon n summation i equal to 1 to n x i g w transpose x i minus w 1 upon n summation i equal to 1 to n g 1 w transpose x i. So, this is how we update the weights first and then we get the updated weights w curl, but these updated weights w curl may not have norm equal to 1. So, we divide w in step 5 actually we divide w by its norm. So, that the updated weight has norm 1 and then we iterate between steps 4 and 5 that is now we use this w the updated one we again go to step 4 using step 4 we again update it we get updated w curl again we normalize it and so on. So, we iterate between these two f steps, steps 4 and step 5 and we stop when convergence is attained. So, this is how you can find or you can extract a single component. Now, the single unit iterative algorithm estimates only one weight vector which extracts a single component. So, at a time you are actually obtaining one weight vector or you are estimating one weight vector on the basis of given observations and we also assume that the observations are whitened and using that weight vector you can extract a single component. Then suppose you want to estimate additionally mutually independent components, then you repeat the same algorithm and uh, linearly independent projection vectors are obtained to extract other components. So, this is how you can proceed. You extract the components one by one 
one component at a time. Multiple component extraction. Now, first we consider the parallel algorithm for multiple component extraction. A, in parallel algorithm, single component routine is carried out in parallel for each independent component to be extracted. So, for e, corresponding to each independent component, we carry out the earlier uh, routine or earlier algorithm for extracting a single component and uh, we carry out the algorithms in parallel. Then a symmetric orthogonalization is carried out on all components simultaneously. So, suppose you find the unmixing weights corresponding to all the components, then you form the entire weight matrix capital W and a symmetric orthogonalization is carried out. Uh, deflation method extract independent components sequentially one by one. So, you are extracting the components one by one in a sequential way. Parallel method extracts all independent components simultaneously. In parallel methods, you find the weights corresponding to all the components simultaneously. Now, we consider deflation algorithm for multiple components extraction. Again, the first step is to center and whiten the data to give x. And then we decide on number of components m to be extracted. So, we decide the number m which is the number of components you want to extract. Then for k equal to 1 to m, we initialize w k. Each of these w k is r cross 1. And then norm of each of these w k is equal to 1. Norm of w means norm of w k for all k. Then we update w k is. So, updated w k is equal to 1 by n summation x i small g w k transpose x i minus w k 1 upon n summation g 1 w k transpose x i. So, this is how we update the weights first. Again, we have to normalize w k. So, in the next step, we divide w k by the norm of w k and then we get this updated value of w k. Then we iterate w k until you achieve the convergence. So, you iterate these two steps, you get updated w k is here. Again, you go to this step, step 4, you update w k is again and then you divide the, these updated w k is by their norm and so on. So, you repeat this process. Now, if k is less than m, then we set k equal to k plus 1 and we return to step 3. So, here we iterate the process until you get convergence and then suppose k is less than m and your objective is to extract all the components m. Then we set k equal to k plus 1 means we increase the number of components to be extracted by 1 and then again we return to step 3. Then parallel algorithm for multiple components extraction is first we center and whiten the data 
and then we decide the value of m, the number of components to be extracted. In the next step, we initialize m vectors w1, w2, wm and each of these m vectors is of order r and each of these vectors has norm equal to 1. Then we define the matrix capital W. So, capital W is equal to W1, W2, Wm transpose. So, naturally the order of capital W is M cross R. In the next step, we carry out symmetric orthogonalization. That is, we update this matrix W by the transformation W transpose W to the power minus half W. So, that W transpose W to the power minus half W and if you take transpose of this, then you get W transpose W transpose W to the power minus half and then you multiply it by say W transpose W to the power minus half W. This is equal to identity matrix. Then for k equal to 1 to m, we update w k by 1 upon n summation x i small g w k transpose x i minus w k 1 upon n summation g 1 the second derivative of capital G or the first derivative of small g is g 1 and then you have w k transpose x i here. So, these are the updated weights. Again, we form the matrix W and we go to step 4 and then we come to step 5 and so on. Then we carry out another symmetric orthogonalization of W and we return to step 5. So, we iterate between the steps 5, 6 until we achieve the convergence. Now, some of the non quadratic functions and their first derivatives which uh, one can use are say here is the density, suppose you are taking or using log cos hyperbolic. So, the function is log of cos hyperbolic alpha y, its first derivative is small g y, which is equal to capital G1 y the first derivative of capital G y is 10 hyperbolic alpha y. Then the second derivative of capital G y which is the first derivative of small g y is alpha into 1 minus 10 hyperbolic square alpha y. Then exponential function, the function is e to the minus y square upon 2 the first derivative is y e to the power minus y square upon 2 and the second derivative is 1 minus y square e to the power minus y square upon 2. Now, suppose your separating matrix w is a square. A square means the number of latent variables is equal to the number of observations you have taken that is the dimension of x. So, first we center and sphere the data to obtain x and then we decide m, then randomly initialize a separating matrix w as we did earlier and then we compute y equal to w x. Further, we compute lambda i equal to expectation of y i g y i, where alpha i is equal to 1 upon expectation of g 1 y i minus lambda i. So, lambda i is this 
alpha i is this for all i equal to 1 to m. Now, how to get these expectations? So, usually we take g as the 10th hyperbolic function and then we set d alpha equal to diagonal alpha i's and d lambda equal to diagonal lambda i's. Then we update w by say you take w plus d alpha d lambda minus expectation of g y y transpose. So, this is how we update w and into w is here. So, now in all these expressions in this expression for w and in previous expressions for lambda i and alpha i these expectations are involved. In practice expectation is estimated using a sample average. To estimate these expectations you simply take the average over all the observations or sample average. Then after getting these updated w these w's may not be orthogonal. So, what we do? We carry out a symmetric orthogonalization of w. Uh, we make this simple transformation w w transpose to the power minus half w. So, you get this transformation and this updated w which is orthogonal. Then uh, we return to step 4 and proceed unless the convergence is achieved and once you achieve the convergence you stop. And uh, for non-linear mixing one can use kernel ICA. Of course, uh, here I am not going to consider kernel ICA, but uh, if your problem is non-linear and uh, you have non-linear mixing then the, the option is you use kernel ICA. Uh, now, we consider this example. In this example, we have simulated 1500 observations from two signals and the two signals are two sine waves. And suppose the resulting series are S1 and S2. So, in the next step, we mix S1 and S2. And then we use fast ICA and mass packages in R for unmixing the mixture of signals. We have these two series and then we have mixed these two series and then using these packages we unmix these two series. Now, this is your mixing matrix A and then we have plotted these two series first and then we have applied first ICA package ICA algorithm which uses ICA algorithm and uh, then we have extracted the two signals from the mixed signals. Now, this is plot of simulated signals say this is the plot for the first signal and this is the plot for the second signal. And then we have mixed these two signals using the mixing matrix A, which we have considered here. This is your mixing matrix and we get these mixed signals. This is x 1, this is x 2 and then we try to unmix these two signals x 1 and x 2. So, suppose s 1 and s 2 are unknown and we have observations on just x 1 and x 2 which are mixtures of s 1 and s 2 and from x 1 and x 2 we have to extract s 1 and s 2. 
So, you have to unmix these two x 1 and x 2. So, first we perform the centering and whitening to our data and then we iterate the procedure. We use log cos hyperbolic approximation and then we also use negative entropy function and in fact, we get uh, the convergence just after three iterations. Then we plot the two unmixed signals using fast ICA and S 1 dash and S 2 dash these are the unmixed signals. To compare the actual signals S 1 S 2 with S 1 dash and S 2 dash. In the next slide, I am going to plot the original signals and the mixed signals simultaneously. So, these are the graphs, these are the original signals and the extracted signals. So, this reconstruction has done a good job. You are able to extract the two signals, but one thing you notice algorithm cannot recover the exact amplitude of the source. So, the exact amplitude here is 1.0 here it is around 1.4. Again for the second signal here it is around 1, here it is slightly more than 1, it is around 1.6. So, except this amplitude part you are able to extract the signals or you are able to recover the signals. Exploratory factor analysis. Now, suppose uh, you have ICA problem, but you have noise also. So, earlier we have defined ICA for the noiseless case and uh, there the sources and observations have the linear relation. And when we apply this ICA to real world problems, you may encounter with the effect of noise, you cannot avoid the effect of noise. Again the number of sources is also unknown. In earlier algorithms, fast IC algorithms, we assume that the number of sources is known. So, we set some value of m beforehand but usually it is unknown. Then to fit the noisy ICA model, you can use exploratory factor analysis EFA. Now, this is the factor analysis model. Say the linear mixture of noisy ICA is x equal to A s plus E. In non noisy ICA your model is x equal to A s, you do not have any noise E. Here we assume that s and E are uncorrelated, further s has mean 0 and covariance matrix I and E also has mean 0 and covariance matrix equal to say psi equal to diagonal psi 1 psi 2 psi R. So, different components of E are mutually uncorrelated, that is why the off diagonal elements of psi are 0. Then first we standardize input variables x, say x 1, x 2, x r transpose to have 0 mean and unit variance and then we write x j equal to a 1 j s 1 plus a 2 j s 2 plus 1 plus a m j s m plus e j 
for all j equal to 1 to r. Here s 1, s 2, s m are the latent variables or common factors and ultimately your objective is to extract s 1, s 2, s m. Further a 1 j, a 2 j, so on a m j, these are the factor loadings and e j s are called specific or unique factors. And ultimately, you have to obtain these factor loadings and then you can extract the latent variables or common factors. Now, if s j s are uncorrelated, they are called orthogonal factors. Otherwise, if s j s are not uncorrelated, that is s j s are correlated, then they are called oblique factor. Now, sigma x x is equal to say expectation of a s plus e, a s plus e transpose. Say you can combine these R equations as x equal to a s plus e, where the vector e is formed as e 1, e 2, so on, e r. a and s and x are as defined before. So, sigma x x is equal to expectation of a s plus e, a s plus e transpose and then you have this equal to a times expectation of s, s transpose, a transpose plus expectation of e, e transpose and then we have assumed that s j s are uncorrelated with e j s also. So, the cross product term expectation of a s e transpose is 0 or expectation of e s transpose a transpose is 0 and expectation of e e transpose is equal to psi. Further here expectation of s s transpose is identity matrix. So, you get a a transpose here. So, ultimately sigma x x is equal to a a transpose plus psi. So, E f a exploratory factor analysis problem is to estimate a and therefrom recover s. So, again we write the model in this form x equal to a s plus e and suppose b is equal to a transpose a inverse a transpose. Then a b x is equal to say you take a b a. So, what is a b a? a b a is equal to a a transpose a inverse a transpose a. So, this is equal to a. So, when we multiply a s by a b we get a s plus a b e. So, you get a b x equal to a s plus a b e. Now, notice that a s is equal to x minus e. So, we write a s equal to x minus e plus a b e and then you can write it as say x equal to 
you take E and A B E towards the left hand side equal to A B X plus E minus A B E. So, ultimately you obtain A B X plus I minus A B E. So, you get this and then we write it equal to x equal to c x plus capital E, where c is equal to a b and capital E is equal to i minus c e. Further, the rank of c is m. Now, suppose x 1, x 2, x n are standardized input data and then the estimate of sigma x x that is sigma head x x is equal to 1 upon n summation i equal to 1 to n x i minus x bar x i minus x bar transpose. So, this is an estimate of sigma or sigma x x. Then lambda 1 head is greater than or equal to lambda 2 head, so on greater than or equal to lambda m head. These are m ordered eigen values of sigma head x x and the corresponding eigen vectors are v 1 head, v 2 head, so on v m head. v 1 head is the eigen vector corresponding to the lambda 1 head and so on v m head is the eigen vector corresponding to the eigen value lambda m head. Then the estimates of a and b are given by a head equal to v 1 head, v 2 head, so on v m head and this is equal to b head transpose. So, this is actually reduced to rank problem now and using Escort Young theorem you get this solution. Then m vectors of estimated factor scores are say f head equal to b head x that is v 1 head transpose x, v 2 head transpose x, so on v m head transpose x and then we take transpose of this. So, these are the factors or estimated factor scores. Then suppose you want to apply the maximum likelihood procedure then ML factor analysis assumes the distribution of S as normal N and 0 I M. Now, we consider this example. Say, we have texture of measurements of a pastry type food and we have taken the data set from this link. And uh, just I give you a brief description of the data. Say, oil denotes the percentage oil in the pastry, density is product's density, crispy is crispiness measurement on a scale from 7 to 15. Fracture is the angle in degree through which the pastry can be slowly bent before it fractures. Hardness is a measure of the amount of force required before breakage occurs. And then we have 50 rows and 5 columns, one column corresponding to each of the observable variables. Then we have used factor null function of R. Then we set the number of hidden factors to be extracted or the number of latent variables to be extracted equal to 2. Then the estimate sigma head of sigma is composed of the variable t explained by a linear combination of the factors and of the variable t, which cannot be explained by a linear combination of the factors. 
So, you have two kinds of variability means uh, one part is the variability which can be explained by the linear combination of the factors and the variability which cannot be explained by the linear combination of the factors. So, we write sigma hat equal to a hat a hat transpose this is called community plus psi hat which is uniqueness or noise. Remember that expectation of x x transpose was equal to a a transpose plus psi and then you have estimated expectation of x x transpose that is sigma x x or just for convenience we are writing it here as sigma. So, sigma hat is equal to a hat a hat transpose plus psi hat and uh, this first part is called community that is the part of variation which has been explained by the linear combination of factors and this is uniqueness or noise part which is the part of variability which cannot be explained by the linear combination of the factors. And here the uniqueness is say for oil the uniqueness is 0.3338 around for density it is 0.155 for crispiness it is 0 0.0422 then for fracture it is 0 0.2560 and hardness it is 0 0.4069 means uh, this is the part of variability in oil which cannot be explained, this is the part of variability in density which cannot be explained by the linear combinations of factors, this is the part of crispiness, part of fracture which remains unexplained and the part of hardness which remains unexplained by the linear combinations of factors. Of course, uh, you can easily calculate the part which has been explained by the linear combinations and that part can be obtained just by taking 1 minus 0 0.3338602 or 1 minus this part, 1 minus this part. So, this is the part of variability which has been explained by the linear combination. Then we have obtained the factor loadings A head. We have just ignored the factor loadings which are very close to 0. So, in first factor oil has this much of loading, density has this loading, crispiness has negative loading which is minus 0 0.745 and fracture has this much of loading. In factor 2, crispiness has the loading 0.635, fracture has the loading minus 0 0.573 and hardness has the loading 0 0.764. Now, notice one thing say if you write approximately it is equal to 0, this is approximately equal to 0. So, crispiness factor 2 gives more weightage, factor 1 also gives weightage, but it is in negative direction. Density factor 1 gives more weightage, factor 2 has weight almost equal to 0. Similarly, for oil fracture hardness, then sum of squares for loadings for factor 1 it is 0 2.490, for factor 2 it is 1.316, then uh, you can obtain the proportional variance 
the factor 1 is able to explain 49.8 almost 50 percent of the variation and factor 2 is able to explain almost 26 percent of the variation. So, two factors combined can explain around 76 percent of the variation. Now, if the two variables have large loadings for the same factor, then they have something in common. Say here I have taken the by plot corresponding to factor 1 and factor 2. Then if you consider factor 1, factor 1 accounts for the pastry which is dense and can be bent a lot fracture before it breaks. So, factor 1 gives high loading to density and fracture. Factor 2 accounts for pastry that is crispy and hard to break. Crispiness, hardness, these two are very high for factor 2. So, you may associate the latent variable soft pastry with factor 1. So, it gives high loading to density as well as fracture, it does not break easily. So, it must be soft, whereas factor 2 is the or the latent variable corresponding to factor 2 is hardness. So, factor 2 accounts for pastry that is crispy and hard to break. Crispiness is getting a lot of weightage in factor 2 and it is hard to break. So, the pastry has to be hard. So, these are two latent factors. The first factor gives the property of soft pastry and then the second factor, this factor accounts for the crispy and hard pastry. So, in this uh, lecture we have discussed uh, different uh, FOST ICA algorithms for extracting a single component as well as for extracting multiple components. Then we have also discussed exploratory factor analysis. We can use exploratory factor analysis for extracting latent factors or latent variables for a noisy ICA problem. We have also discussed an example and uh, with the example I have elaborated how you can use the exploratory factor analysis for extracting the latent variables. So, I am going to stop here. Thank you. Hi, I am Chitwan Lalji, a PhD student of Health Economics under the supervision of Dr. Debian Pakrashi uh, from the Department of Humanities and Social Sciences, IIT Kanpur. 
in one of my essays, I'm interested in understanding the relationship between consumption of fruits and vegetables and various health indicators. Health indicators, both subjective and objective health indicators like mental health, self-assessed health, various measures of blood pressure and various measures of cholesterol. Uh, measures of blood pressure like systolic and diastolic BP, you have your incidence of high BP, MAP and incidence of high MAP. And as far as cholesterol is concerned, I have tried to concentrate more on total cholesterol, good cholesterol and incidence of high cholesterol. Now before I go on to what have been my major contributions and various policy implications, I would like to briefly tell you about the policy initiatives of WHO and various countries. The WHO, that is the World Health Organization, it started with a campaign of five a day. That is, you should have five portions of fruits and vegetables per day. That would be approximately, you could say, 400 grams of fruits and vegetables. Now, a portion, before we go further, I'll just tell you what exactly is a portion. One portion is equivalent to a medium-sized apple or one small glass of fruit juice, which is approximately 150 milliliters and uh, maybe three teaspoons of vegetables. So, uh, the WHO went with a five-a-day campaign, which was further taken up by various countries. Countries like UK, Netherlands, Germany, Norway, they adopted the five-a-day policy, while some went for expansionary dietary policies, like France, Australia, Canada, Denmark. So, for example, Australia, it went for go for two plus five policy, in which it said that you should consume five por two portions of fruits and five portions of vegetables per day. And USA went for a policy of fruits and vegetables, more matters. That is, you must consume more and more fruits and vegetables. Now, irrespective of these expansionary dietary policies and dietary propagations, it has been found that only 28% of women and 25% of men they actually meet the recommended dietary norms of five a, po five a day portion. So the major contribution of my work is firstly to find an association between fruits and vegetables, whether there exists a relationship between fruits and vegetables and health indicators. And if there exist, whether if due to heterogeneity in the data, so I will be doing it according to age, by gender and by uh, your weight. So, apart from that, I will go for policy recommendations in which I, will, I am basically studying uh, how much fruits and vegetables matter, apart from that, which type matters more. So, for that, I have taken data from the Health Survey of England. Health Survey of England is an annual survey which takes uh, data, which conducts information regularly on demographic and socioeconomic characteristics. You have your lifestyle behaviors like an individual smokes or doesn't smoke, alcohol consumption, you have your sedentary and physical activities and you have various health uh, indicators also which have been collected. Uh, so uh, before I go on to what exactly is my research, I would like to concentrate more on fruits and vegetables like what kind of questions were asked in the survey. Questions like what kind of fresh fruit do you eat? Did you eat any dried fruit yesterday? Don't count dried fruits in cereals, cakes. Apart from that, for vegetables, they asked how many tablespoons of vegetables did you eat yesterday? So approximately after this whole survey was conducted, data was converted into portions of fruits. And uh, like for example, three, por three tablespoons of vegetables is equivalent to one portion. So data was converted and provided to the users, that is us from the UK Data Health Survey. So the major con contributions of my paper is that I found a strong negative association between uh, intake of fruits and self-assessed health, then various measures of uh, blood pressure like mean arterial pressure, high mean arterial pressure, high blood pressure, systolic and diastolic BP and your total cholesterol. Apart from that, I have found a strong positive association between consumption of vegetables and good cholesterol. So it is recommended in a way that if you want to control your blood pressure, you must consume more and more fruits. And as far as vegetables are concerned, they impact your good cholesterol. Apart from that, I went in for a falsification test. A falsification test is basically conducted to know whether the model that you have adopted and the conclusions that you are drawing are not spurious. So if uh, a falsification test is done to know, in a way it is tested by seeing 
an indicator, a health indicator which is not being impacted by your consumption of fruits and vegetables. And then see, we see whether there is significant result or not. If there is no significant result, that means your model is good and your results are non-spurious. So what we did is for falsification test, we took ear complaints and infectious diseases. Now ear complaints like if you are deaf since birth or you have some kind of imbalance, body imbalance, that is not being impacted by your post consumption of fruits and vegetables. And we did find insignificant results. Apart from that, infectious diseases like HIV, A, HIV AIDS, etc., we found similar insignificant results, indicating that our, uh, that our results are not spurious, non spurious. Apart from that, we went, uh, since there was a, a lot of heterogeneity in the data, like uh, by gender, by age and by weight. We, can, we did the regression analysis. We found results which stated that as far as uh, fruits are concerned, it impacts a male's health more than a female's health. So it is basically said a, a man should consume more fruits to impact his health, whereas as far as vegetables are concerned, they impact a women's health more. But this has been only seen as far as cholesterol is concerned, the various measures of cholesterol like total cholesterol, good cholesterol and your incidence of getting high cholesterol. Now after this, we went in for a policy implication and in the policy implication, we found, we tried to find two policy implications, what matters and exactly how much portion matters. So as far as how much portion matters, we have found that on an average, five or more portions of fruits impact your overall health, that is your self-assessed health, your MAP, your incidence of high MAP and incidence of high BP. But if you want to have a good mental health, so you can optimize your mental health by consuming three or four portions of fruits as well. And similarly, has, uh, as far as self-assessed health and total cholesterol is concerned, an individual must consume four to five portions to optimally have the impact of consumption of fruits. Apart from that, vegetables have had a very little impact on your health. It only impacts your incidence of getting high MAP and high BP and uh, you, it's seen that only it impacts when you consume five or more portions of fruits. So an optimum consumption of five or more portions of fruits and vegetables are recommended, but fruits have a more impact on your overall health, on various measures like self-assessed health, mental health, your various measures of blood pressure and various cholesterol levels. Another thing that we find is which type of fruit matters. It has been seen that all size fruits, they impact your self-assessed health, your systolic and diastolic blood pressure, your mean arterial pressure, your high BP and incidence of getting high MAP and high cholesterol. But we find that uh, as far as frozen fruits or canned fruits are concerned, they have a they help in regulating your incidence of getting high MAP or high BP, but it has a trade-off. That means there is something negative happening. It reduces the good cholesterol in your body. Apart from this, it, if, you if you have an incidence of getting high cholesterol, it is recommended that you must consume fruit juices because it has a impact in reducing your probability of getting high cholesterol. And uh, dried fruits, they impact your self-assessed health. As far as vegetables are concerned, very little impact has been seen. It has only been seen in case of uh, uh, portion of salads and its association with self-assessed health. Another thing that they have seen is vegetables in composite, they have an association with good cholesterol. So overall, my research basically says that there is an association between consumption of fruits and vegetables and various health indicators. And um, it is highly recommended that an individual in order to be healthy must consume five or more portions of fruits and five or more portions of vegetables per day. But fruits have a more impact on your overall health. Apart from that, all size fruits, they have a better impact on your overall health, your mental health, various measures of blood pressure and cholesterol. So thank you.